Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at a rather interesting question by Jamaica Dog. <laughs> this is Ed Baxley, KN4RWQ, who is in Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina. Yes, what seems like a simple question, but it turns out it could be a very interesting one. It says, hello Dave, please tell me what happens if you turn an inverted V on its side. Um, does it matter what angle or pitch the V is as long as the legs maintain the 120 degree angle from the feed point? Okay, let's draw what he's talking about. Okay, now let's look at it from the side. Okay. I think we need a little bit more light there. Um, look at it from the side. You've got um, an inverted V is like this with uh, one uh, pole. Okay, and these, the ends are usually kept in the air by adding rope uh, down to the ground and you've got to mark these so people don't trip over it, of course. Uh, the angle in here should be at least 90 degrees, 120 degrees from there to there is considered uh, a, good, a good angle, okay? Now, his question is this. What would happen if he, now let's do a top view, okay, a top view. Okay, here's a pole that's got the top of the inverted V. Here's the house over here. And he's going to run the wires like this. This is an inverted V on its side. We'll just call it a fallen V. Okay, it's a sideways V like this. What would happen? Now, this would be one quarter wavelength at the lowest frequency. Okay, one quarter over, so for a total distance of a half of a wavelength, okay? Now, would it work? Okay, let, let, let's answer the simple question first, okay? The simple question is, would that work? And the answer is yes. Okay, you are going to get uh, some of the, more of the radiation in the direction of the V or I'm sh I should say opposite the direction of the V. If your V is like this, the radiation will be in this direction. Will it work? Yes, it will work. Um, but it brings you amazingly close to an antenna that's built exactly like that. And I want to show you what that is. Uh, this antenna technically considers uh, two long wires placed as a V uh, horizontally. And the long wire should be two to three wavelengths. Now, if you're running this on 40 meters and you've created a 40 meter length on the thing, you're not going to get that effect. But you will get that effect if you uh, look at some of the higher frequencies where the length is actually multiple wavelengths on each side. You have turned this into a V beam. Okay, let's take a look. Now, first of all, let's remember, this is a very important distinction. Long wire is equal to, I'll say, K lambda, where K is, say, greater than 3. Okay, um, So it's multiple wavelengths long. And if you put this in a V-beam like this, you're going to get a very interesting antenna pattern. Now to show that, I'm just going to pick up, this is the 23rd edition of the um, antenna book, uh, 23rd edition. Um, combinations of long wires. And down here we have the V-beam. Instead of using two long wires parallel to each other, they may be placed in the form of a horizontal V 
with the included angle between the wires equal to twice the angle made by the main lobes reference da 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 da. So anyway, here's what happens. If you have a long wire going this way, you get this weird shape. If you have a long wire going this way, you get this weird butterfly shape. But if you have, this is the feed line here, and then long wires here, you get a bidirectional, a very strongly bidirectional uh, signal this way with little tiny um, side lobes right in there, okay? Now this, uh, I'm going to draw it a little bit more clearly here. You have a V, and this is multiple wavelengths, okay? And then this is fed. Now, the feed point impedance of this is high, okay? Um, and it's not, the impedance here is not 50 ohms. It's more like 7 or 700 or 800 ohms. It's high. So you're going to feed this with open wire line that you have made special for purpose so that it matches the impedance going into this thing right here. So you're going to make your own open wire line and then take that to a standard tuner and be able to tune it. And the thing will be bi-directional in this manner. Okay. And very strongly so. This has a very sharp uh, beam width. Okay, so you can do that with this, and it talks in here uh, about uh, how to do that. And it talks about different types of elevation patterns and so on that you can get out of uh, this antenna. To do a V-beam properly, you need lots of space. Um, some people like to put these way high in the air. Uh, you don't necessarily need to um, because, after all, uh, if you're working on 10 meters with one of these things, there are already multiple wavelengths in the air. Now this brings us to the obvious, what happens if you treat this like a folded dipole and bring it back on itself like this. This is a rhombic antenna. It's R-H-O-M. BIC. Again, this is multiple wavelengths long. I say K, some constant greater than about two or three. Okay, uh, and it's not necessarily a multiple. It's not an integer. K can be any number. So it could be two and a half or three and three quarter or whatever. Now these are connected here. Okay. And it gives you almost the same radiation pattern, this way and this way. So you feed it here, and you uh, leave this end open, okay? And you get a very strong bidirectional pattern. Now, let me show you an interesting secret. If you terminate this, with a resistor equal to the feed point impedance. Let's call the feed point impedance R um, FP for feed point impedance. And you put a resistor, and it's going to have to be a strong resistor here because it's going to dissipate half the power. You can make this R feed point resistance here. Usually on a rhombic, this is around 800 ohms. And this is around 800 ohms feed point. How do you make a feed line for this? Remember that if you have two wires, you take that the uh, uh, Z naught for the uh, wire is Z naught equals a function of the uh, wire size. and the distance d between them and there's a formula for that okay if you feed this this way this antenna will radiate in this direction only 
basically what happens is this resistor absorbs the radiation that would go in the other direction. It doesn't give you additional gain. Now, if you're going to operate this at a single frequency, like a commercial entity might, you can put a little creative um, RC uh, network here. I'm not RC, but LC network here, so that this is fed back in the correct phase. Okay, or you can do it with a piece of uh, coax that's cut to the right length for that particular frequency. If you're going to use this on multiple frequencies, and this is a multiband antenna, then you just put a resistor in there. This creates the resonant rhombic antenna, or unresonant as, as may be. And here it is. There's the antenna right there. They haven't talked yet about putting a uh, resistor right in there. But you get some really, really wild things going on. Um, and the rhombic antennas, rhombic antennas are extremely strongly directional and put out a phenomenal signal because it has such a narrow bandwidth, okay? So um, there you go. That's more of an answer that you wanted, undoubtedly. But you are on the verge there, um, Ed, of creating um, a very directional antenna that can work uh, on multiple frequencies there. Now, the, f and the, the, the uh, V-beam antenna to work on 40 meters needs to be multiple wavelengths long. So like a thousand feet, uh, if you've got that much room, uh, go ahead and do that. If you don't, well, most of us don't. Uh, so you have to, you know, use a traditional uh, beam or something like that to get that. But to answer your original question, if you lay the inverted V on its side, it will be a bit directional and it should work just fine. After all, uh, rule three of antennas is that any antenna is better than no antenna. So there you have it. Now I want to talk about our giveaway for the month, and that's this thing right here. This is the FG085 Mini DDS Function Generator, okay? And it works up to about 100 kilohertz. So it's mostly good for audio and stuff like that. But you can create, I mean, this has all the functionality of a modern arbitrary waveform generator. So you can get square waves, sine waves, triangle waves, ramps, uh, things like that out of here, plus a bunch of other interesting little things. So um, this cost me, what, $100, something like that for a kit. I had a little trouble making it, but it works, and it can be yours. Uh, to enter, put your uh, name, on a piece of paper or a card like this. Here's a card. And with your the address to which you would want it shipped if you win the drawing, uh, send it to KE0OG, Dave Kassler, P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. And somewhere on there, put that it's giveaway number seven. Okay, so we know just which one uh, you're interested in. And um, this is an example of one that unfortunately came late. Take into mind that we're going to do the drawing on the last Thursday in February. And uh, that's coming up, uh, that's the 24th, 24th. So you've got about a week from the, uh, or so to get that to me because it takes an unpredictable amount of time in the Postal Service. So again, snail mail uh, to the address I gave you, and uh, we'll do the drawing, and someone will be the lucky recipient of this. This comes also with a, um, a probe attached to it that can attach to the output. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.